Welcome back. So yesterday I was talking about the possibility of this being a head with a, no a nose, like a chin, top of the head, maybe generally here with elongated by some kind of headdress, which then uh, at some point I realized maybe Bermuda Triangle then is like the ear if we go to Gernar this thing this like if the head is comparable to this in some way I was thinking maybe if it's like a Birdman, maybe it has that feature there. Maybe some kind of forehead mound. <laughs> I don't know, but just kind of going off of that thought was one thing I noticed. And then I was just kind of looking around, like, what, what, are there any shapes here of interest? And I ended up realizing, oh yeah, there's one up here that goes up this way and over this way with an eyeball of like a skull of a serpent or a feathered serpent um which like the head coupled with this thing off its back with a spine down the middle really brought to mind this It's not, it's more so going up, it's not going sideways relative to the head. Like, if here's the head, it, again, it has here the earpiece. So maybe Bermuda behaves kind of like that earpiece thing in this structure, which then off of the back has this head that's like this head. So then I was looking around. Like if, if this is the head where we have a jaw all the way down here and kind of wrapping around here. Then maybe off the like top of the head is this thing. Maybe that's related to Norway and Sweden and Finland and this region. Divided to two different halves. Divided. And then like off of the eye, this feature. I haven't looked around like this, but it looks like those, I don't know why they'd be land I was thinking here like going this way and then going maybe here like down this way and then up even and down and then up maybe maybe the more so like that and then this one going maybe into here Then off of the neck, there's another current going in, maybe in here, leading to an overall current going around this way. It's like at the at here as opposed to like over here maybe. So maybe here. Going 
in and running into another current. That's generally going around this way. I don't know. But I, it, it occurred to me, it's a little derpy looking, if you will, like the head's here, but it kind of looks like someone's seated here with legs down to here, like feet, knee, and then a huge head. So like seated legs, and then atop the legs, is this that I the handbag thing that I believe represents Australia that was connected here? So maybe Australia was connected here. It for sure is a handbag. So maybe it's presence or or just the system over here that was over here is reflected by this and the hand is if we go to hither like the hand is holding this thing maybe I don't really see the same handbag structure as this with the handbag here handle here But essentially, I believe it was, that was happening above this, which then had this going up this way from like here up this way. So below it around here, this was going on that then like moved to be underneath Australia as it like grew into a steady state that then f really focused Australia out here but it was generally down to like here even like it, the eastern side of Australia this portion to here were connected here so like the feet were very close to Australia itself so Australia would have been functionally atop the legs approximately maybe not atop them if these are feet right there <laughs> I don't know what else could be just kind of considering universal things that maybe are reflected in this <clears throat> Rattlesnake tail past the feed <clears throat> possibly something to do with the like beam coming out of here that was Essentially, the Galapagos hotspot was here, where that's the Hawaiian sphere was. This was over, so maybe this was forming like as it's moving it, but it is below it, somewhat formed below as it moves out from atop it. It's already like formed, or forming substantially enough that there's it's not just like a void. Like something sliding out from under due to the pressure as the earth expanded. 
where I'd like the foot that was over here, maybe more so. Like this was the top hit. Had a sphere like nearby, having a field off of it over here, though, with like South America here. This field. I mean, it's certainly got spiral effects, kind of, like if something is rattlesnake-like, maybe it could have some element to it, rattlesnake-tail-like, and producing a current away that interacts with the first current coming off. I mean, it certainly produces a jet stream that goes up and away, but then these interact along these channels, I believe, as well as just going up this way, creating like a loop that as the earth expands, stays conjoined, but maybe it interacts like counter pressure to the current coming in this way. And then between like there's a current going that way and a current going that way. Like in here. Uh -huh. No. North of there even though. Like up here. Possibly right through there. basically towards this. Yeah, that's where the, this area is, is over here. So it's initially pointing towards it pretty well. So we can kind of say from all the way over there, through that thing, through that thing, this Sudbury, uh, Sudbury, I'm gonna say basin impact. Images, Tamagami, magnetic anomaly, something like that. Yep, yep, okay. Ew. I was wondering how they're positioned relative to one another, but they might be in this line, in this path. Which then continues to there. Deviating though, like splitting around it, around this system that is ancient, I guess. down here then is maybe like this thing in this instance where there's like an X maybe here goes this way and this way maybe here then here one and here one maybe Going to Bighorn towards over there. And maybe this, this is like the golf, and this is like the stretch only. 
Although that's part of the head. I also feel like that if that's the bag, that Aust if Australia is the bag, then the hand holding it is really the current. So that ends up holding it through this way, but maybe it was holding it also above it initially. Or there's just no parallel in this thing. I'll just some looking. <laughs> as soon as I saw this combination, I was curious enough. I was like, oh shit, was I muted? Okay, um, I was looking for stuff, looking for stuff to learn today, found a video on a lecture, I try to watch geology lectures from like geologists on specific topics that are like based on technical papers and I found one today on Wyoming that I was watching that was um, said it was the nucleus of North America I found that very interesting immediately given my awareness of Bighorn Mountain having this nucleus thing it's like hmm I wonder why they would say that I don't necessarily see it that way per se although maybe with it being round like that I don't and like channels in maybe like a membrane but uh it's kind of off center I don't see that kind of structure everywhere so I don't know if I'd interpret it as a, the nucleus just for that reason alone, so I was curious why they would say it. Okay, so, um, substantial 3 billion year old crust in Wyoming. Let's get the borders. Wyoming. Okay. Bighorn Mountain, Yellowstone, Grand Tetons, somewhere, maybe that one. Possibly that one. That's interesting. Okay, so... Uh, original crust thought to be formed by melting of over-thickened ocean plateaus. I found that interesting. That... Um... The crust in Wyoming is thought to have been from some kind of an ocean plateau that was over thickened, and I've been essentially interpreting like essentially North America as a whole to have an undercurrent that flowed under an ocean, so it was kind of like an oceanic crust. In a way, the craton of North America, maybe. So I, as I was watching this, I considered the possibility that like this region here is actually very much like this region here. And it had uh, like ancient 
similarities where it became like the an ocean of a on the pre-expansion earth of a similar nature to how this is like the western pacific like the biggest ocean on earth was really had this like region there that was the canadian shield and at all like whatever even extending it sounds like to wyoming and beyond like all of the rancha possibly having a period when it was actually oceanic uh, i don't know if it really matches when the like approaching 550 650 million years if it was like that but just brought that idea up in my head um Lower layers melt granite rise to the top with uh, sodium by disodium oxide. I don't know what that term is. I think it's just soda and pot. What do they call it? Potassium oxide. Okay. What is it? Na. Like, I think he's called it soda. Sodium oxide, okay. Chemical engineer here. <laughs> I'm like, do they... Anyway. So this, there's a lot of sodium oxide and not much potassium oxide in the granites in Wyoming from this time period, which later on he mentions after subduction began, granites transitioned to higher potassium oxide relative to sodium oxide. Um, Which maybe I was thinking is just related to Earth's expansion process, depending on timing, or just like a decay, some change in the actual like atomic element that Earth represents most, where then it like radiates differently, where then it's like granitic. Right, the things that, that are rising as these granites to the top actually have different sodium versus potassium like concentrations uh, the granite mountains 3.82 billion 3.3 billion 3.4 billion in Wyoming, let's see, let's find the granite mountains. I guess, or just granite mountain. Lots of these things. I think he even mentioned that on a smaller scale versus like this kind of thing, I guess. It's just not the same appearance. Okay, okay. All rocks measured involve a mixture of melt and mantle. So there's some mantle coming up and mixing with what was present already. So I'm given the time frame. I'm my interpretation 
3.8 is, I guess, like, post-Mercury stage, <laughs> or during it becoming Mercury from release from the, the sun, where it was Vulcan within the sun's, like, boundaries, or so close to it that it undetectably around it, I don't know, I think within, just like within what we observe as the photosphere is another, like, space for an even denser system that orbits, that then uh, comes out and cools rapidly in, like, a 4.5 to, like, somewhere around, like, three, depending on what the numbers are, and then at some point, it supernovas to become Venus, i.e. it expands at first time, so it goes through some other transitional phase, which is kind of what I'm looking at some of this data with in mind, and then it becomes, like, Venus, and then it becomes uh, a new Earth somehow, I guess by dividing into the Earth and the Moon. <laughs> Which either happened pre like expansion 550 million or like during the process I've I've concluded it happened beforehand but I'm still open to the possibility that the moon somehow was part of the earth before it expanded so there's some missing components that doesn't really make complete sense to me though so it makes more sense that the moon formed as like a dividing of the of Venus due to it becoming a new earth like it doesn't just go venus to a new earth it becomes goes venus to new earth plus moon just the thought i know i sound insane when i'm talking about things that are just kind of out there <laughs> and talking about them with like sincerity and as if it's even plausible possible like clearly odds are from what we know it doesn't make any sense so why waste the time why waste my time why, why waste your time why waste, why waste any time it's clearly a waste of time but is it <laughs> okay anyway um only one way to find out if it's actually true i mean if it if it's not true then like this won't blow up if all the things I say are not true, surely many are not true, but, like, all the things? If there's even a few of the things I've said that are valid, it's still substantial. And get noticed enough to be incorporated into collective consciousness. Which is pretty much what's going on, like, a control over the collective consciousness. So, in Wyoming, there's uh, some rocks that are apparently uh, 2.86 million or billion uh, year old rock sequences that are found in the Wyoming province and that are also found in the Slave province. Oh, I believe somewhere around here. Let's find its exact boundaries. I know it's a lovely name. not draw at the same place. I guess it's here. Uh, pretty much like there. I don't know if the 
Great Bear Lake or whatever. Bear Lake is on top of it. Well, it looks physically like it might just be here. Generally speaking. The image even has it further. It's not just like a big shape though, it's broken in pieces and things. Kinda looks broken in pieces like the, if there's flowing lava with like solidifying crust on the top that's taking polygonal boundaries, they'll like run into resistance and just fracture. Kinda has that appearance with the way that's fractured here. Given that it probably was part of something smaller, like a mercury, pre-mercury, something that grew, and as it grew, it broke apart its shell, and then took its shell, and added to its shell an intermediary that bonded its shell back together, but also filled in a new shell. and just repeatedly did this to its present state with some changes that maybe were back to different smaller radius where material was lost. So these are suggested to have once been together, this region in Wyoming, and I think he also said over here, and I looked into it, and also down here, I believe. Yo, slave province, Wyoming province, once together. Yeah, this is what I was watching. Oh. It's, uh, it's definitely somewhere. I probably have a tab open. some point subduction began the granite's changed okay um get gives inescapable evidence when plate tectonics began which he then says to be 2.7 billion years so i interpret that as inescapable evidence when a change in mercury to venus began at 2.7 so like the the supernova of Mercury was that 2.7 billion years? If we date Mercury with some method, that's
Uh, okay. Similar in appearance to that of the moon, showing extensive Mara-like planes and heavy cratering, indicating that it's been geologically inactive for billions of years. It's more heterogeneous than the surface of Mars or the moon, both of which contain significant stretches of similar geology, such as Maria and Plateaus. I get them. That made me think of the Canadian shield itself. Heterogeneous. Albedo features are areas of markedly different reflectivity. Okay, let's keep going. Heavily bombarded. Uh, 4.6 billion years ago, where are we getting this from? As well as during a possibly separate sequence, subsequent episode. I'm not sure if the dates are coming from anything except the Earth. I'm just curious. Because from what I'm saying, Mercury may be, like, detectably younger, where it has anomalously lacking evidence of things, although craters are probably not the best uh, basis, because essentially they form when the system goes between changes, like Earth expansion created a bunch of craters, as did the processes on the moon and on mercury that made appearances of certain things but mercury i don't know if we can really date it like that without like getting actual materials from it which is pretty hard to do that we can measure there's probably ways to measure like the compositions from afar but whether or not there's anything Except inference to determine its age as much as there is on Earth. Like, there's, there's actual radioactive decay rates that can be used by, like, under technical machinery in a lab setting that can be done in mass so it at least has a rigor a rigor to it where this is probably much more just inferred that's what i'm getting at okay anyway i'm uh, just thinking about some things um what i'm talking about is also in mercury the messenger god video maybe i should check that out again I really, it just, it just adds so much of Earth's history to Earth to, like, even think about that I was focused very much on the Earth's expansion because it's all, like, one thing. In order to, to go back further, it almost takes, like, finding these cratons, like, the chunks that once were and doing the same thing again through this, like, repeated process. Kind of like how the last Ice Age hit, hit all the data of the previous glacier glaciations. So there's not really evidence of those. There's probably not very good evidence of previous Earth expansion processes, but it still went through such processes where its chunks divided, broke apart, and new crust formed, maybe some old crust was lost completely, expelled out from the system to create like a, a earth and a moon kind of thing. Um, perhaps best example of early Himalayan like orogeny in northern Tetons. Metamorphic conditions in the northern Teton range, 2.69 giga uh, billion years. Um, which to me uh, is suggestive maybe of, again, a process where the Earth is expanding, where like this chunk, this chunk, this chunk are together, but then this space opens up between them 
like here, like there was a chunk here. There was a chunk maybe uh, even, here. this was all the way up in Arizona, Tasmania. Whether or not that's the same, but like over here it's I almost feel like it has like a Merkaba. Hmm. But what I'm getting at is that this happened on the previous, before the Earth expanded, its previous process where it did the same thing over here <clears throat> on on this crust though of of the Laurentian crust where like it was happening here like a, imagine a flow goes under here lifts it up enough but then water is flowing all the top it etching it out in a similar way but then it becomes above sea level and just then we call it Canada, let's say. Same thing happened here, where it was underwater, lifted up, but then maybe the like the components of it, the way the shield is like this big hexagon, and just these pieces off to the side with another piece all the way over here somehow another piece over here of this crust that's found in certain places dating back to that long but 2.7 maybe is when like this region started to open similar to like 180 million years this started to open up and then this started to open up maybe 2.7 billion years um Another metamorphic episode, 2.68, lower pressure, 2.69. I found, found that a little interesting that it would be distinguished like that. If there was a high pressure, 2.69, and then a lower pressure one, 2.68 at the Grand Tetons. Of some kind of metamorphic conditions, high pressure temperature. Um, Bighorn has 2.8 billion year old granites that have not been deformed at all, he said. Which made me think of, like, if there's some kind of energy flows around here later on, like, they would be pretty well protected at the eye of the storm, where there wouldn't be maybe deformation here. I don't know if he explicitly said that there is more definition, uh, deformation elsewhere, but uh, it was a thought I had. The southern terrains accreted 2.2, possibly 2.62. I don't know if it was missing a 6, because then there stitched on by magmatism so there's some southern terrains accreted uh, like into it at around 2.62 uh, I guess bill billion years and then magmatism that connects them which maybe is similar to this like it's kind of below it. It wasn't here. It was atop it, but then it moved down and it was connected to it. This stuff as well, maybe. Just thinking of possible relationships, if it is like the same process happening mirrored 
across time even in cool ways that are subtle but present in the definition of the terrain by like the way things were able to be etched like this sur the surface was pre-existing in a condition where it could be etched and, and display its preconditions better is kind of what I'm thinking but also encouraging the process like the water still flowed according to the shapes in ways that were because of it being basically like the same as this this thing out in the Pacific that was this thing out in the pre-Pacific the ocean that was here uh, even though there wasn't an ocean like on Venus if you will like it still behaved in the same manner so maybe it doesn't need like actual water to do that maybe some other material is good enough that just like pulls there in some way and functions with it I don't know Uh, southern Wyoming, whatever was here, rifted away 1.8 to 2.0 billion years. So there were some things connected, and then they rifted away 1.8 to 2 billion years ago in southern Wyoming. Let's go to Wyoming again. Okay, somewhere down here, rifted away, and un unknown where they went. Um, some people say Superior Province in Ontario. Superior Province, Ontario. The Superior Craton, I guess. Up here, some people say it moved over here, thereabouts, over there. But then he said, um, doesn't look at all alike. It's just, they're just saying it based on the dates that they find in the two locations, I think. Which is maybe possible, like, if if you were to have, like, this chunk somewhere off over here, and then this chunk over here, and people, like, tried to piece it back together, like, something was here before, but we can't figure it out, and then they dated it, and they like, looked at it, they're like, how could this, and, like, they're not the same at all, like, shouldn't it look more like, like it, but it, not necessarily maybe it's like a positive negative yin yang kind of thing i don't know if that's what was happening in this instance um let's look at this wyoming i guess the wyoming is really extends all the way up there even in terms of the craton Two point oh to one point eight, two point oh to one point eight, two point Um, also said Colorado smashed into Wyoming. At some point, like in the distant past, 1.8 billion. 
Trans Hudson Orogeny. I said it looks like the dragon. This here, going this way, up this way, down here. The structure he showed was just one color, so it was more clearly having a shape like this. So like this is off the edge, so it's not really off the edge if it's going through it. <laughs> like across it, it literally crosses the whole thing. Possibly there, oh, where was it? Not sure when the yellow dates to, okay. Uh, One, I see this protrusion, it makes me think of... It's not nearly as narrow. I really would like to entertain that possibility. There's something of that nature going on. Whoa. It's almost like folded, large scale folds. Uh, 1.4 to 1.5 billion years, North America intruded by anorthocytic plutons and granitic batholiths. I wonder if I can find, if I go to YouTube, and uh, whatever, go here, screenshot, part of me, sir. Where is it? <laughs> so. <laughs> is it just downloads? I guess it's just downloads, alright. This was interesting also, North America over here, in the green areas, as well as Dunnage, these stretches. Uh, mix of 400 million year old. So this is while the Earth is, Earth is expanding, it's adding these layers. From the bottom of the Iapetus Ocean. And then Gray blue areas are sediment and lava less than a hundred less than a billion years that originated from Europe and Africa. Gray blue, so like the outer edge in here, I guess. And then um the yellow in the middle is largely four hundred million year old granite from, from the Acadian orogeny. Forms of white and green mountains. The coastal plain in the U.S. is much younger sediments and less than 100 million years old, which is where all the Carolina Bays are. So certainly Carolina Bay related to that. Like that, that's new. Like it wasn't as firmly formed that yet. Basically, um... I thought I had a picture, I guess. Where is it?
Oh yeah, now I remember what I'm looking for. This was good to see. I drew this continuously. Like, like there. Lead to. And led to. I'm trying to find where he's this here. Here we go. He says in this video, the there am I anorth anorthosite. There am I anorthosite there. This black dot. End the Sherman granite. Sherman granite, this white dot. Possibly more of them, but I'm assuming just the one at the least. Um, came up together in the 1.4 to 1.5 billion year time frame. And this is Archeon province, part of the Wyoming uh, province. I guess. This is Wyoming province, I guess, and the boundary of it. Connecting to this pre-1.6 billion orogeny region, but had 1.4 to 1.5 million years, billion, billion years, according to radiometric dating. The, these two systems came up together, so it made me think granite versus anorthosite, a pluton and a batholith. Like, there's this positive-negative thing going on all over the place, yin-yang, like this thing's... Opposite is here, this thing's opposite is here, maybe, kind of thing, energetically, in a way that creates like a balance between the two. So, this is a very, very rare anorthosite. One of these formed in the southeast of Wyoming. Somewhere over here, I guess. And then another one formed at Yellowstone. So there's at seven kilometer depth, which made me think of maybe that it was exposed over here. And then I don't know if it's actually seven kilometer depth, like part of Yellowstone formation or more so, more so Yellowstone just happened to form where that already was. Because essentially, like there's some kind of system here that anything, anywhere there's like a upward pressure could maybe bring, lift up and expose evidence that like the, this sh structure here is kind of reminiscent of a structure he shows throughout here. Not that one. This one. Nope. Like having this. This. This here. Big horn. Maybe where the Granite Mountains is, or that. Or that might be there, even. Going over to there. Maybe. I don't know if this is the right coordinates. Or maybe that is all the way to there. I don't know. Like that, like there. But in essence, where, like, the reason these places are exposed is related to the Earth's expansion process and producing this location. Also, we mentioned the, there's islands, ancient islands here that were above, were above sea level. Really made me think of um, 
like Atlantis Islands maybe being in Wyoming, like part of the domain of the um, Atlantean kingdom that was here, like headquartered here's Atlantis, but then went all the way at least to here, possibly down here, over this way, like before the Earth expanded. Similar to like if someone were to rule a substantial amount of the world from some somewhere like here and have like all of this be their domain. Where maybe this was part of Atlantis, which was over here. And it's territory that then has some signal sign, I don't know. Big Horn Mountain Mysteries. In the heart of the Crow Indian Reservation, as such, there are many stories and legends that surround the Bighorn River and its Crow tribe heritage. Legend. Legend has it that a young boy and his mother lived together in one of the first villages in Crow territory. Another man came along and became the young boy's stepfather. By and by, the new father grew jealous of the young boy. So one day, the stepfather decided to take the boy hunting for bighorn sheep in the Bighorn River Canyon. The stepfather was pointing out some sheep below the cliff edge, and as both were leaning over the edge to look at the sheep, the stepfather nudged the boy over the cliff edge. The boy tumbled down and landed safely on a ledge with no way down and no way up. For four days he waited and prayed. On the fourth day, seven sacred bighorn sheep came to his aid. The leader of these sacred rams was led by one that had horns and hooves that were shiny like metal, and therefore his name was Big Metal. This group of mystical rams ruled the Bighorn Canyon. Each of the sacred sheep gifted him a special power that gifted him keen sight, a strong heart strength, sure-footedness, keen hearing, and wisdom. Big Metal then gave the boy the name of Big Iron. A badger also wanted to give the boy the knowledge of the sweat lodge. The bighorn sheep told the boy that they would lead him out of the canyon if he promised to go back to the village and deliver a message. Big Iron was to report to the tribe what the stepfather had done. Then the sheep wanted him to relay the message that these mountains in this river should always be called the Big Horns, and if the name would be ever be changed, the tribe would lose its land. Well, I'm not sure what to make of that, but okay, I guess I I gotta go. I'll I'll be back uh, sooner or later. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Till next time.